waiting for the recording to get started. Okay, recording is started. Greetings and welcome to our weekly mentoring hour. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Can I request John Paul if you could pray and so that we can start the session with? Sure. Father, we want to thank you for this time. Lord, we pray this morning as we come before your presence to learn from your word more and to clear our doubts. So, God, we pray that you would speak to us and let your word be revealed to us in its fullness, God. We pray for all the faculties. Pray that yes. they'd be able to help us understand your scripture in a better way, God. Lord, let your Holy Spirit lead us and help us to walk in authority, walk in according to your word, God. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, John. Let's begin this um, session. And uh, today we have Pastor Selina McBana facilitate the discussion. And over to Pastor Selina. Uh, thank you, Diana. Uh, shalom, everyone. Praise the Lord. Uh, trust all of you are doing well this morning. Hope you'll had a good uh, night's rest and uh, feel fresh and strengthened to face another new day. Uh, so we just, I think, have uh, three students who've joined us, uh, John and Avni and Herbert. Uh, okay, John already has uh, put his questions. Okay, um, anyway, welcome all of you to the a weekly mentoring hour and uh, during this time we um, you know address your questions questions that you have uh, regarding your personal uh, journey or walk with the Lord um, can be questions from the Bible or uh, from the course that you're studying um, you've studied in the past you're studying presently any doubts you have uh, please feel free to uh, type your uh, questions in the chat section or uh, you can unmute your mics and ask your question. Um, thank you, John, for the questions. You have two questions here. The first one is from Matthew chapter 9, verse 28. Why did Jesus ask not to share to people the healing of uh, the blind man? Okay. Uh, and the next question is uh, from Matthew chapter 10, verse 9. What would have been the reason Jesus said not to take even two coats or sandals or a staff? We learned in biblical interpretation class that it doesn't apply to us. But what would have been the reason behind Jesus asking this? Okay, thank you for your question, Sir John. Uh, we'll answer the first question. We have our pastors and our faculty here to address uh, your question. The first one is from Matthew chapter 9, verse 28. It says, uh, why did Jesus uh, ask not to share to the people the healing uh, of the blind man? So can uh, one of our faculty answer that, please? Matthew chapter 9, verse 28. Uh, after that verse 30 actually uh, so it reads and their eyes were uh, and their eyes were opened and jesus sternly warned them see that no one knows about this that part okay so one of our faculties like to answer this anyone um uh we don't know for sure, but we could, uh, I guess we could make an intelligent uh, guess or, you know, try to look at it from a, a logical thinking because uh, although Jesus never stated, you know, and on many occasions, um, he, he told people, you know, not to go spread the news 
uh, only on, in the case of the demoniac of Gadara, when that man wanted to follow Jesus, that's the time he said, go and tell people in your country how great things the Lord has done for you. So uh, I think if we just look into a little deeper into what was happening. One was, uh, there were certain parts of the country where um, uh, the, he was being mobbed, meaning lots and lots and lots of people were coming. So in, in that situation, he said, you know, don't go, don't go and tell. Um, another situation would be when his life was at stake, especially in Jerusalem, when, you know, towards the latter part of his ministry, when people were against him, and this is around John chapter 7 and so on, um, <clears throat> when people were uh, against him, wanting to kill him, so he just wanted to keep things quiet, you know, just work in a quiet way. But in areas where he didn't have access, for example, in the case of the demoniac of Gadara, the people just sent him off. So he came, he arrived at the coast, they sent him off. So that means he didn't have access into that country. But that's when he told the man who was delivered, you go and tell people what great things the Lord has done for you. So I think um, uh, Jesus was being very um, wise in, in, the, in all of this, uh, not to create undue attention uh, or, or uh, attract opposition unnecessarily. And also to, you know, wherever he couldn't go, that's when he told people, you go and you tell, tell what the Lord, great things the Lord has done. So that's just, you know, um, it's, I'm not saying that's what the Lord explained because he never explained why, but uh, I'm just trying to look at it from a very, you know, look at this scenario and maybe this is why. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Uh, John Paul's uh, second question is from Matthew chapter 10, verse 9. What would have been the reason Jesus said not to take even two coats or a sandal or sandals or a staff? We learned in uh, biblical interpretation class that it doesn't apply to us, but what would have been uh, the reason uh, behind Jesus uh, saying this or stating this? Can I try and answer that? Sure, question? Pastor. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I think it's interesting uh, in Matthew 10, like when he sends them out the first time, he says, don't take anything with you. Uh, but towards the end of the ministry, and Luke records this for us in Luke 22, uh, 35, 36, Luke. Um, so the second time, and Jesus, this is before his crucifixion, and he sends them out. That time he says, it's very interesting because he says, when I sent you out the first time, I told you not to take anything with you. Did you lack anything? And they said, no, we never lacked. But then he changed the command. He said in Luke 22, 35, 36, but now I'm telling you, you take two of each. You know. So the first time he said, don't take anything with you, like don't take your clothes, your money, you don't worry about anything. Towards the end of his ministry, he changed it. He said, you take double with you, right? You know, so um, the question he poses in Luke 22 is, did you lack anything the first time? And they said, no, we didn't lack anything. And so uh, uh, one, uh, so the two, two, two observations we can make is one is, of, of course, he changed the command. That is, first time he said, don't take anything. Now he says, take double with you. Uh, and the second observation is the question he asks, did you lack anything? So uh, perhaps, and again, this is something we're just deducing or inf inferring. Uh, the reason he, the first time he told them not to take anything is just for them to experience the fact that he's going to be faithful to provide. Uh, but then he reversed that command later on in Luke 22. Um, he still continues to be faithful to provide, but I think the, the meaning message is that, you know, we need to make use of resources that we have and, and, and use that for, as we go about the ministry. I hope that helps or gives some thought. Yes, Pastor, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor, for answering those uh, questions of John Paul. Uh, anyone ha else has any questions? Uh, please feel free to... Uh, uh, type it in the chat section or you can unmute your mics and ask the question and we will answer it. Yeah. 
Anyone has any questions? Yeah, Pastor, can I ask a question, please? Sure, Nicholson. Please go ahead. So, uh, Pastor, just uh, out of curiosity, if we look at Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 16, uh, 15, uh, 16, yes, it talks about, it talks about, uh, sorry, Jeremy is next to me. Uh, no worries. <laughs> yeah, it talks about Lucifer and it continues to say that he was involved in some trade. So uh, I was just wondering, like, what trade could he possibly be involved in? Uh, shall I read that particular reference? Or uh, Yes, please go ahead. So by the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God, and I destroyed you. Oh, 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 covering cherub from the midst of the fiery stones. So that's the reference. Ezekiel 28, 16. 28, 16, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I drew, drove you in disgrace from the Mount of God and expelled you, O guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. Yes. So that's Ezekiel 28, uh, verse 16. Yeah. Thank you, Dinah, for putting the verse on. Uh, any of our pastors, faculty would like to answer this question? Okay, uh, maybe I can try. Um, so, uh, Nicholson, so that particular verse, Ezekiel 28, uh, and um, let me see, uh, can be understood in two ways, and uh, and one of the you know so one is uh, and, and this 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 verse of scripture in uh, in some way is used um, by certain people who believe in a pre-Adamic world. So this is one of the scriptures that they that they use. That means. Um, so, so what they mean by, and I'm not saying I subscribe to it, I'm just saying there are people who believe this. Um, what they believe is that uh, before Adam, uh, there was a pre-Adamic world uh, where, uh, you know, Lucifer and maybe others were on the earth. They were cast out of heaven but they moved on the earth because some of the scriptures, you know, uh, seem to indicate that. So, and so that is one explanation. So that means he was moving on the earth and doing things, you know, uh, and that world was then destroyed by a great flood. And that's why when Genesis 1, 2 begins, it begins with the earth being without form and void. And there was a darkness on the face of the waters. It seemed like the waters were covered uh, the earth was covered by waters, right? So, and then, uh, then they use that to explain the presence of dinosaurs and all of these, you know, um, uh, uh, fossils that are found that are very many, many, many years old and so on. So there are some who subscribe to that kind of, uh, uh, we call it a theory because it's not necessarily uh, stated very clearly in the Bible, right? So if, you know, assuming that was true, um, that there was a pre-Adamic world, then Ezekiel 28 explains that, that Satan was moving on the earth, carrying out whatever he was doing. Right? Another way to understand Ezekiel 28 is just by understanding the meaning of the word uh, trading or merchandise, which simply means trafficking. That means uh, you're going about doing something. Right? It doesn't have to necessarily mean buying and selling. It's trafficking. You're engaging in something, your, in your, your activity. So, but the abundance of your activity you know, uh, uh, iniquity was eventually found in you. Now, uh, they've filled the midst of you with violence and you've sinned. So if we just go by the word uh, peddling or, or trafficking, uh, not necessarily having to do with buying and selling, but in the sense of him carrying out, they, I use, you know, if you use a generic English word, activity. So that means 
by all that he was involved in, he eventually ended up sinning. Uh, if you just understand the word merchandise as you know, peddling or trafficking or activity, then we don't need to create a pre-Adamic world to understand Ezekiel 28. We can just say that, you know, whatever he was doing, he ended up doing things wrong and uh, corrupting himself as well as one third of the other angels. So there are two positions based on Ezekiel 28. And I would take the latter personally, because that just seems to be consistent with the rest of scripture. We don't have to create a pre-Adamic world to explain dinosaurs and all of those kinds of things. Um, uh, so that, that's how we would look at Ezekiel 28. Is that okay? Um, yes. Thank you, Pastor. Yes. Thank you, Pastor, uh, for answering uh, Nicholson's question. Thank you, Nicholson, for your question. Uh, anyone else has uh, any questions? Please, oh. please. Pastor, just uh, one doubt. He asked this question. So in Second Peter chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, uh, I'll read it for us. For when they maintain this, it escapes their notice that by the word of God, the heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed out of water and by water, through which the world at that time was destroyed, being flooded with water. So would does this mean, uh, destruction talk about Noah's uh, flood? No, the time the flood happened at Noah's time, or the one uh, you mentioned at the first? Yeah, yeah, that's true. So this is again, this is another passage. So there are basically, I think, three passages: one in Ezekiel, one in Jeremiah, and Second Peter three, the one that you mentioned now, um, that people use to talk about this pre-Adamic world. Uh, but again, you know, when you look at Second Peter 3, 5, and 6, uh, you again don't have to create a pre-Adamic world to explain um, the world, uh, to explain Second Peter 3 and 5 and 6. You can just say, look, it just, you know, we know for sure about Noah's flood. And uh, I mean, we know verse 5 can um, clearly match, Second Peter 3, 5 clearly matches with Genesis 1, 2. And then, Second Peter three six clearly matches with Genesis six or with Noah's flood, so you know it sits very well with these two verses. So we don't have to use Second Peter three five and six to create a pre-Adamic world, you know, which is you know uh, which is not very clear in Scripture. So um, yeah, so uh, Ezekiel twenty eight, Second uh, Peter three five and six. And I think um, there's one more passage in Jeremiah, which is maybe it's in Jeremiah 5, I think. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not very really sure because I, I didn't, you know, I don't spend too much time on it, but um, um, which they also use to support this, you know, and, and uh, yeah, I think Dake's uh, Bible, um, Dake's is one of the people who supports this pre Adamic world. And, but we don't have to subscribe to it. Yeah. Sure, Pastor. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Pastor, I uh, just want to add one thought, something intriguing. Uh, so, John, um, uh, because there was a mention of this pre Adamic uh, world, uh, if you um, go back and read uh, from people like uh, Hugh Ross, he's a very well known uh, Canadian astronomer, uh, and uh, he gives like he he has researched and he has um, uh, um, evidences to believe in God and not only that he talks about the age of the earth so uh, the way uh, like if you take into consideration like from scripture uh, we've already seen that there isn't uh, much to substantiate that that theory uh, but even scientifically he talks about how the age of the earth is much lesser than you know uh, if you consider like dinosaurs and that sort of a theory so i think that also would be an interesting read uh, for us i just thought i would share it yeah thank you sure. thank you pastor for uh, throwing light on the pre-adamic theory and for interpreting these scriptures that uh, were uh, uh, asked by John Paul and Nicholson. Thank you, Nancy, for the, your inputs as well. Anyone else has uh, any questions you'll like to ask? Yeah. 
Anyone else uh, have any questions? Yes, morning, Pastor. Good morning, Herbert. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I uh, had a doubt. I was asking myself now, uh, if God created Adam and Eve, so uh, they produced uh, two children. Now, <laughs> where did those children now get? Because uh, he taught them multiply and feed the world. Now, where did they get the wives now to marry? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your interesting question, Herbert. Uh, so Herbert's yes. question is, uh, you know, Adam and Eve uh, had Cain and Abel, had two children, and then Seth was born to them. Uh, so where did they get their wives from? Uh, any uh, faculty like to answer the question? Anyone? Yeah, so the Bible only records, you know, the names of the, the boys, Cain, Abel, and Seth, but it doesn't record Mary, Jane, and John. No, I'm just joking. It doesn't record the names. It doesn't record the names of the daughters. <laughs> so it doesn't mean they never had daughters. So in the in the very beginning, right, um, when God created Adam and Eve and gave them the commission to fill the earth, uh, the, uh, it just implied that you know there would be, of course, this intermarrying. So Cain, Abel, and Seth, uh, but obviously Adam and Eve had daughters too. Their names are not recorded, and so there was this uh, you know intermarrying. I mean, in the sense that they, uh, from among the children itself, uh, more, more descendants were born. Uh, that would be the obvious uh, conclusion. Uh, and it was not wrong uh, at that time, uh, simply because God had to, you know, he set that in motion for them to fill the earth and so on. And then subsequently, you know, he gave in, gave the rules uh, when there were enough inhabitants on the earth, and he gave the rules of you know how uh, uh, marriage should happen and so on and so forth. So that would be the obvious conclusion, even though you know the names of the the daughters and all are not given. Uh, but that would be just the conclusion that God uh, uh, you know put that in place for that for the for the way to uh, populate the earth. Is that okay? Thank you, Pastor. I hope that answered your question, Herbert. Yes. Anyone else uh, questions? Okay, thank you, Pastor Jay Kumar. Uh, Pastor Jay Kumar says that Genesis chapter 5, verse 4 mentions that Adam had other sons and daughters. Anyone else has any questions? Yes, uh, Nicholson, please go ahead. Uh, Pastor, this one is not a biblical question, but more practical. Is it okay if I yeah, ask? Sure. This? Yes. Okay. okay, so um, I just wanted to know now with the church setting, uh, one of the main struggles is obviously you want everyone to be in their calling and move and on fire, which uh, takes a lot of effort. But what are some of the practical ways that you can actually empower people to do that? Of course, one is sharing the word on Sunday. But uh, so in our, this is of course I'm asking about our church here in Karwar. We have cell groups which are slowly taking place and I mean taking shape and um, we have 
the church setting but somehow there's always something lacking so are there practical ways on since uh, pastor ashi started his church from scratch what are the practical ways where you all took apc to a place where everyone is involved or at least a huge majority is involved in the ministry okay thank you for your question uh, nicholson so nicholson's question is that uh, you know how do we get uh, uh, church members people in church on fire for the lord get them to uh, step out uh, and uh, minister uh, and just uh, move mightily and advance the kingdom of god uh so would one of the pastors like to answer this question so one good thing would be uh, apart from sorry. you said uh sorry pastor go ahead pastor uh, uh, no, no go, go ahead uh, selena you finish and then i'll share Yeah, okay thank you so uh, apart from just uh, you know teaching from uh, the pulpit that preaching god's word uh, you know also like we have at uh, apc uh, the weekend schools uh, you know uh, where we train them to minister healing and deliverance uh, um, uh, in a move in the prophetic so we have uh, uh, you know that weekend school and then also how to uh, uh, you know the gifts of the spirit to uh, to have a knowledge about the gifts of the spirit how to activate the gifts of the spirit in their lives and how to step out and uh, minister so uh, teaching on these various aspects uh, can also help uh, and also we see in our bible college we've included uh, you know courses on children's ministry and youth ministry uh, basically also educating people or uh, giving them uh, insights into how they can uh, uh, minister um, also give them opportunities like uh you know have uh, uh mission trips like we have at apc uh you know send them on missions uh so many of them go on their first time mission trips and uh, it's exciting where for them where they are learning where they are stepping out in faith uh you know just praying for people ministering and uh, during this uh, whole uh you know uh, uh exposure that they have um, you know uh, many of them identify their calling as well god's purpose for their life uh, see the areas where uh, god is really uh, stirring their hearts to move uh, so i think we can create uh, these opportunities and over to pastor jay kumar yeah i just thought i'll share my uh, personal journey because um, when i came to apc i i knew that i had a call but i didn't know the specific of uh, specifics of it so i remember talking to pastor much before um, much earlier you know like say telling pastor i think uh, people have said that i have a call to be a pastor but i don't know what when where how and this was before you know we just started coming regularly to apc so so what uh, one of the things that happened was the uh, you know the the teaching uh the fact the, the the teaching of the truth that every believer is a minister uh, and secondly um the teaching from the word uh, about your call your gifting which and uh, about the um, you know the outpouring of the holy spirit the baptism of the holy spirit the gift of tongues and so on which uh, really empowers a believer and also um, so basically it's teaching of the foundations uh, you know foundational doctrine so uh, something that really um, uh, brings edification something that is a strong structure uh, in in a believer so uh, when that happens um, then the believer you know uh, moves from being a um, believer to a disciple to a minister to a leader now that we know that path um, obviously takes time takes months and years and it's a process but uh, uh, i'm sure pastor can answer it better because um, the thing is over the years we've seen many who take that path uh, come to a place of uh, you know uh, come to a place of maturity and uh, you know pursue their calling uh, in the fullness of it so um, i would say that and i think the, the teaching <clears throat> from the word of god is so important uh, and also living by example and uh, you know giving people the opportunity and having that environment where where um, you you know you create um, that space for people to you know yeah, and life groups is uh, is a wonderful setting to do that to to really uh, ex- um, 
put to practice and like uh, what you've learned, what you have, um, you know, um, all the gifts and so on. It's a safe place. And like what Selena, uh, Pastor Selena said uh, about the, you know, the weekend schools where you go in depth about a particular topic and so people are grounded in it and it'll be a small crowd but then you know that small crowd also gets grounded in it um and then it's, uh, you know people just keep growing so you know just uh, just those four um, steps you know like uh, revelation uh, or teaching revelation conviction action and destiny or five steps i guess so that um, you know when we teach from the word of God, and then the Holy Spirit gives the revelation, which brings conviction in the hearts of people. Uh, when people are moved to act, uh, there is action. And then when they act on it consistently, then, you know, they walk towards the destiny. Um, so I found that to be helpful and uh, true and um, see that really working. So, but it's a process. Uh, and uh, consistently, if we commit to it, um, yeah, I think we will see the fruit of it. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, uh, Pastor Tech Kumar. So, revelation brings conviction. Conviction leads to action, and action to leads to your destiny, the purpose that God has uh, for you. Any uh, one else? Any other pastors would like to throw uh, some light or? Uh, uh, yeah, yes. You know, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, can I just share a small thought, please? Yes, please go ahead, Pastor Ma uh, Paul. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Pastor Jake, for sharing those thoughts. Wonderful. Uh, I, I just thought I'd just share this, uh, especially uh, in ministry, something that I've been reading in uh, Pastor's book, Timeless Principles for the Workplace, uh, uh, doing that in the second year course as well. It's uh, is the importance of uh, reinstating vision, mission, and then following it up with values and culture. So. Uh, I think uh, you know, uh, even when we have a small ministry or a small organization, uh, when we continually say the vision, like for example, ABC, okay, uh, we are salt and light. So it's it's getting into each one. Okay, we are salt and light, and, and then there's this mission uh, on on being that salt and light. And so it's not just a one person's effort or you know just a pastoral team, but it's everyone that, like Pastor Jake's mentioned. Every believer is a minister, so there's this mission that we all uh, are together in a team. Uh, so when we keep reinstating that, I think the church congregation begin to, uh, you know, really uh, grasp that vision uh, and, and say, okay, hey, when I want to be part of this, uh, and then we follow that up with uh, values and culture within the church. Where we set certain values and cultures, and um, of course, uh, do all the other events like how. Uh, Pastor Serena, Pastor Jake's the share. Uh, but I just wanted to share this, uh, I think, reinforcing, reinstating the vision, the mission, values, and culture uh, will in some way help uh, the congregation, you know, to uh, you know, get on their toes and uh, uh, continue to, you know, uh, minister and serve uh, with greater passion in the church. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Paul. So it's important to reiterate the vision and the mission and the culture of the church. Uh, yes, uh, Jean, please go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to add a very, very small point, and that's something that uh, you know is more like a personal journey. Was um, just serving. Uh, so I began, you know, serving in a really small way at Children's Church, cleaning the the chairs, and uh, you know that that in itself, uh, just the faithfulness of being there and uh, putting yourself out in different places where you can serve uh, leads you to understand what God has put inside of you. And then, you know, taking on some of those opportunities also helps people uh, firm up that calling. Uh, because I, I have a very good example of one of our youth who's who's joined in for the teen session and has he's been doing uh, doing it for the last couple of uh, weeks, uh, you know, he he just told me. He said, uh, "I've I've actually found my place of ministry. I know this is a place that I that God wants to use me." So just when <clears throat> you encourage people to serve in uh, whatever area, however small it may be, God leads them into um, more opportunities, and they eventually also can find uh, what God has called them for. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. So true. Uh... Thank you for sharing. Uh, uh, Pastor Selena, can I add a small point also? Yes, please, Pastor Nancy, go ahead. Yeah, yeah thank you. Uh, so Nicholson um, uh, 
uh, in addition to everything that our pastors mentioned, uh, I was thinking that uh, also uh, after having uh, taught the word, after having encouraged the people, given them the opportunity, given them the opportunity uh, one more very important thing is to be patient uh, and uh, know that people are making a journey we could look at uh, the entire congregation and think you know why are they not fired up why are they not all uh, stepping up uh, at once uh, but you see in each one right uh, god is at work and we have to do our part and keep doing our part uh, and uh, yeah slowly but steadily you know we will see people uh, rise up people taking their position so just wanted to add that thought yeah thank you thank you thank you pastor nancy uh, i hope that answered your uh, question nicholson or uh, you know it gave you some insights uh, like um, paul writes to timothy in second timothy chapter 4 uh, where he says, you know, preach the word in season and out of season and do it with all patience because people are there at different levels uh, of understanding, of, uh, you know, of rising up to what God has uh, called them to, leading them to. Uh, but uh, Paul tells Timothy, just be patient with them. Uh, and I, I guess, uh, you know, Paul has learned it, uh, Apostle Paul has learned it in his journey as well, just being very patient uh, with people or sometimes, you know, even with uh, John Mark, uh, when, uh, you know, he, uh, when John Mark didn't want to go ahead with them uh, in the missionary journey, how he did not want to take him on the second missionary journey. But uh, we see how John Mark rose to the occasion and uh, Paul writes in that same uh, letter asking uh, uh, Timothy to bring John Mark uh, to him uh, as he is in prison because uh, he is uh, of um, you know much service in the Lord or he is uh, good for the ministry. Uh, so we need to be patient with people and uh, you know even as we teach, give them opportunities. Uh, people are at different levels, but continue to just invest in people's life. Uh, uh, just uh, teach them, uh, empower them, equip them, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, God will work in their lives. Yeah. I hope that helped, Nicholson. Thank you all for your inputs. Yeah, thank you so much, Pastor. It was very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, uh, for uh, sharing your inputs. Uh, Herbert has a suggestion. Uh, can Friday worship be recorded also such that we can always review those songs uh, and we get them? Sure. Uh, Herbert, uh, uh, Pastor Dinah is on the call and I'm sure she's made a note of it and uh, uh, we'll do that from this Friday. Anyone else has any questions? As we wait, okay, uh, okay, thank you, Herbert. As we're waiting for uh, more questions to come in, uh, anyone would like to share uh, in the past one month, uh, you know, if uh, you've experienced a miracle from the Lord, you've just seen his hand move in your life, uh, or you want to just share uh, God's goodness in your favor over your life, anyone would like to do that now? I'm sure we've, the one last one month, God would have done amazing things in our lives uh, miracles, just even small, but, you know, have just touched our lives, impacted our lives. Uh, anyone would like to share? God's uh, faithfulness, his goodness, his hand over your life. Sister Rupa, you would like to share? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Rupa. Uh, I had a, we had a unique journey last year we came in contact with the i was asking for prayer for brother ashirwadam he is from a catholic background wife is a very good believer but can you hear me ma'am yes we can hear very clearly rupa yes. please go ahead yeah wife is a very good believer they have tried many times to reach him through the gospel but he was not willing he said i am a very good uh, catholic I don't have to convert something like that. And no one was able to reach him. But after he was diagnosed with fourth stage uh, lung cancer, and during the pain, uh, one, she requested me to share the God's love with him. So we prayed a lot. I was very apprehensive. 
and uh, the team was all praying for him and one day when i got connected i did not preach him the gospel because he already knew the gospel i just god gave me a connecting point because he was also going through pain and i had experienced pain in my life i told how god helped me to overcome my pain when i started uh, trusting in his goodness and praising him through that pain and how god delivered me and gave me the strength to go through that pain that really connected he, him with me and uh, he came he started praising god and thanking god and he never once questioned god or talked why did i get this and god through that journey of thanking and praising god he was he experienced god in a, encountered god and he he is saved by god's grace he is not physically healed but we could see the joy he experienced the joy of the lord i have never seen anyone experience to that level the joy of the lord always praising and thanking god and towards his uh, last days he he said amma i want to be in your place when i leave this earth so they came home last uh, during uh, january last week they were with us and he is promoted to glory on Febru february 3rd he wanted no medical intervention because he was in advanced stage cancer and he said please i don't want any tubes nothing no this icu all that he rejected so uh, we were able to give him make him comfortable and he left to the left to home on 3rd february we were really touched through that journey and it is very we felt very sad but at the same time we saw the hand of god the way he saved him and they prepared him to take him home thank you ma'am thank you i praise god for his goodness in his life thank you thank you rupa thank you very much for sharing and uh, praise god for using you to minister uh, to this person and uh, god bless you and continue to use you mightily yes divya you have your hand up uh, you like to share something or you have a question yeah thank you pastor selina i just wanted to share a testimony as you sure. asked uh, about last one month i really uh, thank god for as it says in the word give thanks to the lord for he is good his love endures forever he's such a uh, you know he knows what he needs for his children and provides at the right time so when this year began uh yes uh, i had uh, as a family i also we had some decisions and some things where we need to finalize certain things so uh more specifically i was uh, i had taken a break from my work and uh, it's been 6 years gap um and uh, yeah so it was a long gap but uh, as i was praying and asking god uh, just to open up any opportunities only if it is his will because uh, i was also not very sure but um, my prayer was uh, very specific only if it is god's will please open the door and god opened a door of opportunity for me in the last month uh, there was a lot of favor i could see his hand at work god orchestrated the circumstances people on the way uh, to to be in favor of um, Uh, what i needed uh, and for our family i praise god for his goodness and his kindness um and i also request prayers uh, for this new face in my life thank you thank you so much thank you for sharing divya we sure will keep you in prayer or uh, we just pray that uh, god's uh, favor will continue to lead you and guide you and uh, Uh, orchestrate uh, things very beautifully in his life because he does all things beautiful in his own time and he does exceedingly and abundantly more than we can even ask think or imagine and uh, god uh, you know he perfects everything that concerns us uh, so praise god for his promises and uh, yes it will come true in your life god bless you uh, anyone else would like to ask any questions any questions you'll have or anyone like to share uh, god's uh, 
goodness, faithfulness, uh, any miracles that you've experienced is hand over your life. We just have two more minutes. Yes, Herbert. Mm, thank you. Um, I would like to thank God for this past month. We, we, we managed to begin the term and the term has opened uh, well. And uh, we thank God that now we are working normally. We are no longer in, uh, in lockdown because uh, you know COVID made us have a lot of those pauses in lockdowns. Yeah, so yeah, I really want to thank God. And even I want to thank God for my father. He's okay. He's not yet very okay, but he, at least now, he, yeah, he is not worrying so much. Um, uh, we've seen God's hand uh, protect him. Yeah, even my brother has ulcers. Uh, he's on and off, but I thank God for this last month. <clears throat> He has not at least visited the hospital, but the, like the other previous months, all the time he would move up and down the hospital, the hospital. Yeah, so God is really doing wonders. Yeah, thank you very much, Pastor. Thank you, Herbert. So you you uh, you spoke about your brother. You said uh, the last. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah, he has so been in visiting hospitals time and again but at least this last month at least he has not gone there um god god has really helped him uh we pray for his complete recovery okay so he he uh okay fine thank you we'll pray for your dad and for your brother as yes, well yes 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 mm. thank you for sharing herbert uh, okay we've uh, come to the close of our uh, mentoring hour today. Uh, can I request one of you to please uh, pray for uh, uh, Divya? Uh, you know, just pray for God's favor uh, over uh, their, her life and her the family. Pray for Herbert's uh, brother for uh, uh, total healing and wholeness and for his dad as well. So can one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Can I ask uh, Sister Avini to please lead us in prayer? Sure, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, Avini. Father God, we come to your throne of grace this morning with thanksgiving in our heart, Father. We thank you for your goodness, for your faithfulness, for your mercy, grace, provision, your love. Above all, we thank you for son, your son, Jesus Christ, through whom we have all the blessings, Father. We thank you for the blood he shed for us. For the, sick, for, the, for the healing that he has released from the cross of Calvary, for all the blessings that we have in Jesus Christ, we just want to say thank you, Abba. Thank you for our every testimony points to your grace, Father. Whatever we heard today, Father, whatever we have experienced in life, Father, it's all because of your goodness, Father. And we just want to thank you for this time when we are learning your truth we are growing in your word. We are growing in your holiness. We are growing in your nature and attributes, Father. As we are learning about them, we are drawn to you, Father. And today we want to thank you for whatever we have learned today and in past days, Father, through your children, Father, who have been anointed and who have been teaching us with so much of love and patience. We bless them all, Father. And this uh, morning we want to commit especially Brother Hubbard into your hands, Father, his family, his, fa his father and his brother, Father, that the the healing that has been released from the cross of calvary be their portion father let your healing virtue flow through them father and they be healed and perfected in the name of jesus father let all sickness go father and let them experience health healing and wholeness in days to come and may each day be they be strengthened father in your word in your truth and in your love father continue to be with the entire family and bless them all 
and protect them, Father, and keep them safe and sound. We also want to thank you for Sister Divya's testimony. Lord, Father, thank you that you have showered your grace and mercy upon her and that she's experienced your miracle, Father. Thank you for the favor she has experienced, Father. Continue to lead her, continue to guide her, continue to raise her, put your hand upon her, Father, so that she may experience it more and more and be a blessing to many, Lord, Father, in every way. We thank you for Sister Rupa's testimony as well, Father. Thank you that, Lord Father, you work in amazing ways. You have your plans for your people, Father. Lord, lead us to people who need that grace and who need that word, Father, of release, Father. Lead us, anoint us, and help us to do your will, Father. Not just that we learn, but we may do it, be doers of your word, Father. Continue to be with all our faculty members. We bless all our teachers once again for this day and this morning, Father. Lord, as they share the word, as they teach us, Father, bless them all with your wisdom, your favor, your revelation, Father. Once again, we thank you for APC. We thank you for your presence amidst us. We thank you for your promises in our lives. We thank you for everything, Lord Father, because we are who we are because of you, Father. Once again, we thank you and we ask this prayer in the precious, matchless and most magnificent name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen and amen. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Savani, for praying. Uh, thank thank you. you all for joining this uh, time. Have a blessed day. And uh, the promise from God's word is the Lord will perform all things for us and he will perform all things for each one of us today and the rest of this week. Have a blessed day. God bless you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Salida. Thank you, Kenny. Thank, thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Sister Rupa, for sharing. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you.